From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening of evening. LA with a special one hour broadcast from Santa Monica, California tonight about your fourth stimulus check update of 2022 and the world events that impact your money at home and overseas. We'll be turning back to Ukraine in just a second as the Treasury Secretary dealing with the situation and new fighter plots dispatched to Poland from the United States. Latvia being shored up as new concerns about Vladimir Putin's acts of aggression. But we're going to start tonight with incredible great news as more checks will be coming to the American people. $80,000 of checks and the President of the United States assuring Americans that Build Back Better Act will pass. Why? Because of oil and gas prices. All the latest details tonight in this broadcast from Santa Monica, California. The situation unfolding dramatically overseas with Vladimir Putin advancing in the Black Sea disrupting the situation for not just oil, but also wheat. And what does this mean for you back at home? Tonight, we'll go over the analysis of why wheat prices have not been assessed by the White House or Wall Street, and why wheat disruption, especially in the Black Sea, could stir off American into a potential recession. All the latest details tonight across the board and what you need to know from the land across the sea. Then we'll look at the situation unfolding for SSI, SSDI, Social Security and Railroad Benefits. The opportunity to raise your benefits up $300 more per month. The latest on that tonight. Oil and gas prices going up, but how high could they go up next week? New analyst reports say $4 a gallon nationwide. And then what about the price of wheat trending out of control late last week? The situation unfolding dramatically. OPEC nations not stepping up to ramp up production, but could that change? All the latest details on that. Plus, why is Latvia now the new concern and those Baltic states as Vladimir Putin continues to press on across the board? All these details across the land in tonight's recording. Build Back Better Act mentioned by the President of the United States in a new interview today. Third stimulus, paying out big sums of money. CR for stimulus just a few days away and $80,000 of new checks going live in less than 24 hours from now. Are you ready for the big money? It's covered in tonight's broadcast. From Wall Street to Main Street, all your incredible money, including the Fed of Chair, determining what you can do with interest rate by the end of this week. All those details in a big evening's broadcast from the shores of Santa Monica. It's evenings starting right now. Good evening, everybody. I hope you are good and safe. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has arrived in the Baltic states tonight to ensure that their safety is at issue. But back at home, a lot of economic issues to discuss, and we're going to go over them in this recording. Wheat, oil, and your big stimulus, $80,000 of it. What's at issue? More checks and going out next week. Are you ready for them? I have them in this breaking one-hour broadcast from the shores of Santa Monica tonight. We're going to start first with the Build Back Better Act that was mentioned by the President of the United States in a new interview released today. In that interview, the President of the United States says that millions of Americans need this incredible sums of money because oil and gas prices are going up. And he's right. The national average could trend to $4 a gallon nationwide in a new report released minutes ago. All the latest details in tonight's recording. But then what do you need to know about Build Back Better? And then what about that third stimulus? And what about those MSC checks, CR for stimulus, and those $80,000 of checks? Oh, we have a lot of checks in tonight's recording, folks. I'm going to go over each of them, starting first with the Build Back Better Act. The President of the United States mentioning a new interview. But first, let's go over those checks before we go over that interview in detail. $15,000 of checks across three clusters and three add-ons. That could grow to potentially $60,000 of checks in your wallet. In that first cluster they got in there, hazard pay for my essential workers. One more year expanded under third stimulus, but coming even more under fourth stimulus. $4,000 of elder care checks got in there. $550 checks for my college students, the Pell Grant, 
and then $12,500 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle. They got $3,600 checks in there for young children across the board, and then home repairs included in there as well. That is the first of three clauses of checks in the Build Back Better Act, the fourth stimulus recall. Now, when you look at that Build Back Better Act, there's also three add-ons of checks. And the first one comes from Southern California via Maxine Waters. A little bit less than $25,000 for the purchase of your first home. This is money that would be given to the seller in your name at the time of escrow for the federal government. In the second clause of checks, we got home repairs to weatherize your home and paid leave. Paid leave is a lot. It is $1,700 a week if you make $70,000 or more per year. $35,000, then $800 a week. $15,000 annual salary, $400 a week. W-2, 1099, you all qualify for it. And you don't work, but your son or daughter does work. They're going to get those incredible checks across the land as well. This is four to six weeks per year and about four to $6,000. And this is huge sums of money. It is the second of two clusters of checks. Second of three clauses of checks in the Build Back Better Act. Now, when we look to that first add-on of checks, we had the exciting details of $25,000 from Maxine Waters for purchase of your first home. But the second one, even better. $250 billion for free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities. It was a campaign promise from Joe Biden, and they got it in there. $250 billion for people on disabilities and home health care for seniors across the land. Now let's go into that third cluster of checks, and it gets even better than that. In that third cluster of checks, we have in there checks for seniors, free internet, and also farmers, independent contractors, the nutrition checks, and even more. When we talk about the seniors' checks, two on the house, three coming on the sad side. On the house side, they got in there the Medicaid gap fix. They'll provide insurance to unemployed insured to uninsured people in 12 Republican holdout states to ensure that they have coverage across the board. They also got hearing checks in there on the House. On the Senate side, they got in their dental and vision and lowering the eligibility age of Medicare. Well, there you go. That is the Build Back Better Act three clusters, but there's also <laughs> one last add-on. And that last add-on is really exciting. It is MSC. This is a provision of checks that would be added to the recon on the Senate side that would add more checks on top of the existing checks of fifty dollars to $60,000 already. What is an MSC? An MSC is a monthly IRS stimulus check that would go out the same as previous ones. IRS would pay it automatic to adults across the land. But what's the eligibility? The eligibility is the same as a third stimulus check. Legislators represent the viewership of this channel. Single individuals, $75,000 less, you get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, you get it as well. Double it. Family of four, quadruple it. And if you're on benefits, SSI, SSDI, Social Security, or railroad benefits, you get it as well. It's not income. It's not taxable. It's not California stimulus. In California, we get a surfboard. And it's not refundable. You have to pay, you get it, and it's for you to keep. It goes off of the most recent tax return. So that tax return had direct deposit. That's how you get paid. The eligibility is great, but the payment's even better. How much? We're looking at $2,000 the first month, $1,000 thereafter, for up to six months, says the representatives to viewership of this channel. And there you go. That is an MSC. That is a check that would go into the Build Back Better Act that already has fifteen dollars to $60,000 of checks. But today, out of nowhere, the President of the United States addressed the American people once again about Build Back Better Act. Last week, the President of the United States mentioned Build Back Better Act repeatedly in the State of the Union address and got the highest poll ratings jump of a president in recent memory based upon a State of the Union address. Today, Joe Biden did it again. During a new interview, the President of the United States was, inter was addressing the situation of Build Back and said it's going to become law. $500 billion is for the environment, but the other parts are the way to deal with the people who have been getting the short end of the stick. And now it's time to stop that for a long time. Biden told college historian Heather Cox Richardson in a new interview released today. In that interview, Biden goes on to talk about the importance of getting it done in view of the economic crisis and surging oil prices across the board. Biden goes on to say in the new interview released today about Build Back Better that if you want to reduce the burden on people who are struggling to pay for gasoline, there has to be an overall improvement of the standard of living. 
point to expansion of things like the American Rescue Plan that worked last year. The BBB plan has the same expansion. We'll reduce poverty and increase things that help people across the board. Biden also made a hysterical comment during the interview in which he says, I miss being a professor of Pennsylvania. So do we, because <laughs> he never was a professor of Pennsylvania. Joe Biden was an honorary professor and did some lecturing, but he never taught a class, says a Dale Pennsylvania report after the interview. So there you go. That is a Build Back Better Act that is going to get passed and will get passed in view of the surging gas prices, says Joe Biden in a new interview tonight. But out of nowhere came the exciting details of what's happening with a new $80,000 stimulus check. $80,000 of stimulus checks? Yes, that's coming up later in this one-hour special broadcast. We'll be looking at a new series of $80,000 stimulus checks that are available and going live as early as tomorrow. Are you ready to get it? If you're a member, you got it in the newsletter on Friday. More about that in a second. But let's go back into the next thing lined up for Joe Biden and your money, and it's CR for Stimulus 1.0. In just a few days from now, Joe Biden has his continuing resolution getting called for a vote. And that continuing resolution is to fund the federal government. It's also potentially to give you a check. What's at issue? CR is a continuing resolution, and a continuing resolution is to fund the federal government. But it can also give you a check. Who came up with the idea? I did. In 2020, millions of Americans were watching a second stimulus negotiations continue over 11 months between Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin and no deal. So, on this channel, I came up with the idea to put a stimulus check into something smaller, bipartisan, quick turnaround time, and inherent deadline. It was called then a continuing resolution and still called to its day. CR, at that time, had a December 2020 deadline. So I said, put a stimulus check in it and get it out the door. It happened. It worked. I made history, and the viewership of the channel made history. The viewership of this channel advocated for the inclusion of a $600 stimulus check in the continuing resolution of December 2020. And millions of Americans got a stimulus check because of this channel and because of the advocacy of its viewers. That $600 stimulus check went out, and you got it. But also went out was the implosion of second stimulus. Never paid anyone money and never went to the finish line. So five weeks ago, this channel brought on air back CR for Stimulus 1.0. What we call on this channel, the opportunity to get a stimulus check into the now March 2022 CR. And what's the situation tonight? $1.5 trillion of discretionary funds are in there. Bipartisan support. Negotiations complete. House and Senate, Republicans and Democrats, all lined up. So all you have to do is advocate. Ensure that those legislators ensure that they allocate at least $2,000 stimulus checks out of that CR for you. Remember, inherent deadlines just a few days away, so the crunch time is upon us. Advocate to those legislators and say, put a check in there. Who? Sanders, Schumer, Warren, Wyden, Casey, and Coons. Pick up that phone and contact those senators. Because back in the month of May, all the way to the present, they said they would give you a stimulus check in the fifth stimulus recon and the fourth stimulus recon. But it's been 11 months, and you need that check, and here we go. An errant deadline. March, negotiations complete, and $2,000 allocation available for a stimulus check. Pick up that phone and advocate to them across the board. Next up on the horizon, of course, is Monday, with a new $80,000 stimulus check program going live. Well, how can you get those sums of money? I'm going to go over those details in just a second. And you definitely need it in view of the surging grain prices and also gasoline prices. But what do you need to know across the land tonight? SS300. SS300 is right around the corner and will have new clarity tonight. What's at issue? Raising your benefits if you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, and Railroad benefits by tying it to a new benchmark. That new benchmark is COLA. Let's take a step back. If you're on benefits, your benefits are reassessed every December based upon a benchmark called COLA. The problem with COLA is it doesn't move. And so if it doesn't move, your benefits don't go up. During her run for presidency, Elizabeth Warren proposed to replace COLA with inflation. 
and Joe Biden liked the idea so much, he said, I'll do it as well. During his run for president, he adopted that platform as well. And then, when he became president, he put it as part of his presidential platform at JoeBiden.com. How does this work? Replacing COLA with inflation would raise your benefits up to the current level of inflation. Inflation tracked at 7.5% in the month of December. So where is it tonight? More about that in a second. But if you swap COLA for inflation today, your benefits will go up 200%, $200 a month right now. And if inflation tracked at about 4% by December, you go up another $100 thereafter. That's SS300. So why is it important for Joe Biden to make the swap of COLA to inflation today and not later? All of the details starting right now. At issue is a number called inflation and a, another thing called the FOMC meetings. The FOMC meetings start in the next few days, and they are a series of five meetings in five months at which the Federal Reserve tries to reduce inflation. Wow, does this happen? Let's go over the details tonight. Joe Biden's job is to ensure the economy remains stable, but the man who's tasked with the ability to keep inflation down is Federal Chairman Jay Powell. How does he do it? He increases interest rates. How quickly? Well, he has a lot of options. He can do a bigger increase or he can do staggered increases. The seat details tonight is that so far, Jay Powell, based upon his comments of the last five days, will be doing the following. One, in the next few days, we'll have the first FOMC meeting and give you a quarter basis point interest rate spike. At the next meeting thereafter, he'll stay the same and he'll continue to stay on that track of quarter basis point interest rate spikes at potentially five meetings of five months and not anything higher if it works. But he admits he's watching the situation with Vladimir Putin tonight. But where are interest rates and where is inflation tonight? Brand new details on that and brand new details on what Jay Powell has to deal with on tonight's evening's LA broadcast starting right now. The situation is very fluid. Jay Powell understands he needs to bring down interest rates. And currently we're trying to determine where inflation is for the month of January. It's released a month later. And a new report released, obtained by LA Tonight, suggests that interest that inflation may come in about 7.5% for the month of January. Let's retrack. Back last year, I said in, inflation would come in at 8% in the month of December. It came in at 7.5%. Then in January, I said it may come in at 8% again for the month of January. A new Dow Jones report released tonight says that it's tracking that inflation may come in at 7.5% for the month of January. If that's the case then that means that inflation would not have gone down since the month of December. If that is also the case, that means that if Joe Biden swaps out COLA for inflation today or tomorrow, then you would still get that $200 increase across the board. So what is Jay Powell dealing with? The risk of the upside, it will be a shocker if we get an 8% handle, says Mark Chandler, chief market strategist at Brancock Global Tonight. Meaning, if L8 is right and that inflation comes in at 8% in the latest report due in just a few days, that is not a number that Wall Street is expecting. I'm expecting the number, however, across the board. What is Jay Powell looking at with the situation across the board? Jay Powell believes that economic disruption caused by Vladimir Putin's acts of aggressions are causing it hard to gauge where inflation is going. And if you can't gauge where inflation is going, you don't want to come in too strongly. So Powell admits that he's pivoting tonight and pivoting all this week based upon uncertainty of Vladimir Putin. The latest comments from Powell are, we're going to avoid unnecessary uncertainty at the time of where we are right now, uncertain movement. To the extent that inflation comes in hotter than expected and stays persistently higher, we may have to be more aggressive at that time. But we'll be prepared to raise federal interest rates at that time if that so evolves. Translation, quarter basis point for now, for the month of March. And then if inflation gets even worse because of Vladimir Putin's disruption of economic stability internationally, Jay Powell may have to raise the rates thereafter. So, Joe Biden, make the phone call. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Joe Biden needs to make that phone call to the Social Security Administrator and say, replace COLA with inflation. As Powell, as, as Biden said during that interview released today, 
economic uncertainties abound to the United States and oil and gas is going up means Americans need more economic relief. Well, they need the economic relief. They need that SS200. They need that extra $200, $300 right now and make the phone call. What does he do? All that the president has to do is call the Social Security Administrator, tell them to replace COLA with inflation and start paying out that as your new benchmark. And that's the update on SS300 tonight across the land. Meantime, Ready for an $80,000 stimulus check? Wow, this is exciting. Coming up after the commercial break, we will go over a brand new $80,000 stimulus check program going live. It brings this channel back to day one on the beaches of Hermosa Beach. When I was recording handheld, I told viewers about a $10,000 EIDL grant, a $150,000 EIDL loan, $16,000 of PUA assistance, but they all required your fingers going to a phone, going to a computer, or going to a website. Tonight, much the same. A new program is about to go live that'll pay you fifteen to eighty thousand dollars, but you can't get your hand out like this or go to the mailbox. You have to actually use your fingers and type. I'll show you the website. I'll show you where you're gonna do it. And I'll show you how you get that money. And we're first on it as Purple Hawks. Then we'll be going back more into the economic developing details unfolding tonight and what's expected for the new week. Gas prices are likely to go to $4 a gallon nationwide for unleaded, says a new report tonight. What does that mean for your wallet and what does it mean for economic instability in the United States? Why is Anthony Blinken tonight in Latvia? And what does that have to do with your money back at home? New fighter jets dedicated to Poland from the United States. What's happening? Grain and wheat out of control. Does the White House have a plan for this? And why did Vladimir Putin put part of this as part of his calculations? And why, when you think of the beautiful port city of Odessa along the Black Sea, and you look at the gorgeous opera house, do you not necessarily think about wheat prices in the United States? We are, and I'll tell you why Vladimir Putin may have an economic agenda that the White House hasn't prepared for accordingly. Meantime, the refugee crisis in Poland getting worse. As corridors that were established during negotiations once, twice, and three times with the Kremlin has resulted in Russia three times violating agreements, human rights agreements, to allow women and children to flee to neighboring Poland. All the latest details of the atrocities tonight by Putin not allowing women and children to flee from Ukraine into Poland. It's breaking news tonight. You're going to hear on evenings. Then we'll go back into your big money and we'll be looking at what Boris Johnson, the head of England, says about the Ukrainian war and why he doesn't believe this is a one month of deal or a one week ordeal and what that could mean for your money back at home. We have all those details, plus what's happening with oil and gas and why the White House needs to step up on those issues and more. It's a big Evenings LA, and we're just getting started. I'll see you back in 60 seconds. As Evenings LA goes into this big second half, and I'll also show you how to get big sums of money from Third Stimulus. See you back in 60 seconds. But first, here's a little bit about the community page and the volunteers who can help you get that big money from Third Stimulus. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings at 8 at 9 a.m. Home LL8 returns at 11 a.m. daily.
and then afternoons LA late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Light. And a big evening continues We're now on Evenings LA from the shores of Santa Monica, California, with big updates about your fourth stimulus 2022 money and that $80,000 of new stimulus checks going live. Meantime, we'll be looking at what's unfolding overseas and why Anthony Blinken tonight is in Latvia. The latest on that, plus what's happening with the acts of aggression against Ukrainian citizens and why the United States has now dedicated new fighter jets. The price of gasoline and wheat surging out of control and what the White House isn't isn't doing. And then what you need to know about your money going to a new week as certain prices surging out of control that could potentially send us into a major recession for years to come. I have all those details, plus what's happening with Vladimir Putin focusing his next acts of aggression in a big second half of tonight's recording. You're watching Evenings Allied, America's most watched primetime show in America for financial news. I'm excited you're here, and let's go back into the money tonight. Where are we when we're looking at Build Back Better Act? The situation on Build Back Better Act, very fluid, with the great news of the President of the United States name-checking it not once, but twice this week. First mentioning during the State of the Union address, and then mentioning it during a new interview released today. CR for stimulus 1.0, inherent deadline just a few days away, mid-March, with the opportunity to put a $2,000 stimulus check in it. CR for stimulus 2 and 3.0, congressional legislation, no inherent deadline, but certainly on the horizon. Pete Aguilar. House, Democrat, passing a piece of economic legislation, sent it to the Senate, with the Senate Democrats, led by Todd Young, excuse me, Senate Republicans, led by Todd Young, vowing to merge it with the Democratic version on the House side. Not inherently a deadline in front of us, but the great news? There is an inherent deadline. Tomorrow, $80,000 of new stimulus checks become available starting tomorrow in some jurisdictions. And this is a big sums of money that no one saw coming. What is this money and how do you get it? It brings us back to day one of this channel. When applications go live and you get that money before anyone else, are you ready for those sums of money? We're going to go over all those incredible details of those sums of money starting right now on Evenings. If you're a member of this channel, the website, the links, the eligibility, the items were all detailed in the membership newsletter as of last Friday. And if you're not a member, it's featured in every membership newsletter going forward, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, sent out for you the YouTube alert system and the LA Light alert system. What is this money and how do you get it? First, the payout is huge. It's fifteen dollars to $80,000 of checks per household, number one. Number two, it's called the Homeowners Assistance Program. It's overseen by the U.S. Department of Treasury. The funding is at a whopping $10 billion. Eligibility is the same as a stimulus check. Single individual, $75,000 or less, you'd get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, you'd get it as well. So the eligibility is much like all the prior stimulus checks covered on this channel. Who gets this money and how do you get it? First, it's being administered at a state level. So you're going to reach out to your respective state to get it. But in this case, it's actually a bit easier than a PUA or an EIDL situation. There's actually a website that's been deployed that has been set up for the Homeowners Assistance Program Fund. And guess what? It's in the membership newsletter. The website will have a map that'll show you where locally in your state you can apply for the money. And once you're on that map, you see where in your state you can apply for the money. The money is available in every state except the state of New York, and it's available for you at different durations. Here's what's at issue. Much like PUA, which went live in some states before other states, this will be funded across the board. So every state will have the money, but some states may go live with their program before the others. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be on top of it and show you which state went live with it first and continue to update you on every evening's LA broadcast as to the status of the program in respective states so you know to pounce first to get this money. And what is it? It's a lot of it. The money is eligible for mortgage payments, property taxes, and other items often desired by viewers of this channel, 
but never covered until now. Property taxes, homeowner's assistance. Other items like utilities and home repairs. Average payment, fifteen dollars to $80,000. Want to learn more about it? Become a member. The link's under the video's description. And you'll get that membership newsletter tonight, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, via the YouTube alert system. And at the front of the newsletter is the information about those incredible checks. And that is the $80,000 of checks going live as early as tomorrow. Well, when we look at these checks, what is next on the horizon and what needs to be done? The situation unfolding tonight is that oil and gas prices are surging out of control. Wheat prices are surging out of control. And not particularly a fluid situation with the White House how to address the situation across the land. Build Back Better Act has lots of checks. And those checks covered in this today's tonight's video pay at least fifty dollars to $80,000 of checks, despite whatever happens with Vladimir Putin. But you want to have economic stability at home. So what do you need to know about it? The situation at hand tonight starts right now. Vladimir Putin, back in October, had deployed 100,000 troops to the Ukrainian border. As detailed on the channel before Halloween of 2021, Putin was setting up potentially the biggest economic issue of 2022, as I reported last Halloween. 100,000 troops at the Ukrainian border suggested something was going to happen this year. So did the White House prepare economically to deal with any uncertainty that a potential Russian invasion of Ukrainian, Ukraine would develop? Tonight, we know a little bit about what the White House did and what the White House didn't. First, we know that the White House apparently sent a message to Janet Yellen, Hall Janet Yellen head of Treasury, to determine what sanctions could be levied against Vladimir Putin and what pivots we would need to deal with certain commodities to ensure our economy remains stable. Oil was one of them. Wheat was not. What's at issue? What's at issue is that if you do not prepare for economic instability caused by Vladimir Putin, then wheat would may not be prepared for battling him economically throughout his aggressions against Ukraine. Let's look at the situation tonight. Vladimir Putin, as of last fall, knew he was going to invade Ukraine. And certainly the White House thought that was a threat. You did as well, because I report on this channel. So did the White House economically prepare for all the permutations at issue? Let's analyze the situation. Oil, number one. Vladimir Putin is a major provider of oil to world economies. So the White House was dispatched in October, we now know, to give Treasury the mandate to determine how much economic disruption to oil Vladimir Putin would cause if he evaded Ukraine. What was the result? He would disrupt international economies that are dependent upon oil, like Italy, but not inherently the United States. Why? Because we only import 5% of our oil from Russia. Okay, but did the White House prepare for the analysis of whether we'd have to ramp up production domestically amongst our oil to prepare for a Russian invasion? No. In fact, in a series of new interviews released this week, under Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen was asked whether the White House has addressed the situation of ramping up production domestically of oil. Answer no. Why not? West Texas are Americans ready to produce more oil. But how does this work and why is it so important to your money? If oil is not stable, if gasoline prices are not stable, they surge the roof and we could potentially go into recession. Let's go over the breaking news tonight you're only hearing on evenings. Tonight, the situation is unfolding dramatically, and there appears to be no game plan at hand with the White House. What are the numbers you need to know tonight? First, the price of gasoline is surging dramatically among U.S. pumps. Where are the numbers tonight, domestically and internationally? First, the national average could go to $4 a gallon next week, says a new report from John Kidoff, partner at Again Capital. This is how much you pay at the pump. Next, where has gasoline gone in just a matter of a few days? Gasoline has surged dramatically. The numbers have been dramatic to even people uh, in very big producing gas states. Gasoline has gone from 383, a, it was 383 a gallon on Friday, which was up 11 cents from Thursday. But more importantly, it was up 26 cents from a week before. If you look at the numbers, that would mean that if we reached 
five four dollars a gallon nationwide on average next week we would have gone up nearly 50 cents in one week triple a now reports that we went up 26 cents in one week but 50 cents in two weeks would be dramatic what is the white house doing with the situation tonight not particularly anything here's what's an issue Millions of Americans understand how gasoline works because it's not a complicated subject. And every time the White House talks about it, the answer is relatively not clear and sometimes evasive. Let me go over case in point what's happening tonight when you look at gasoline. The White House, when addressing the situation tonight, said that, well, we are considering banning Russian oil. What do Americans think about this? Most Americans understand this doesn't make sense because we only import 5% of Russian oil. It's fine to ban Russian oil, but it doesn't make a big impact on our economy as a whole, the price of gasoline here, because most Americans understand we don't buy much Russian oil. We buy less than 5%. So banning Russian oil may be a good idea, but it will not bring down the price of gasoline in the United States. Also, millions of Americans understand that we can produce more oil. They understand that Wex Texas can produce more oil. And we understand that Americans want to produce more oil to help one, one another. So when the White House today knew comments from Anthony Blinken saying that the White House is considering banning Russian oil, that's fine, but it doesn't answer the question of why the White House has not ramped up production of domestic oil, which is a whole different part of the equation. How does this work for your numbers and how does this impact your wallet? Very simple. The more gasoline available, the cheaper it is. To ramp up production, you have to have availability to store it. So let's go over the two steps. First, you have the pumping of it, and then you have the storage of it. If the storage facility is full, you can't pump more gasoline. So first, you have to release the gasoline that's stored. Then you have to pump more. Once you do both of that, then you have gasoline released, and the price comes down. West Texas, what is West Texas's opinion of the situation? West Texas oil producers have said all this last week that they will ramp up production for Americans to bring our price of gasoline down. And that they're waiting for the White House to get clarity whether the White House wants that to be done. Under Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen was asked this question multiple times this last week and said the conversation has not happened. But when asked why the conversation has not happened, no response. A plan? Not a plan across the board. You need to ramp up production of oil domestically to bring it back down. And we don't do that. It doesn't go down. Banning Russian oil, which is only 5% of our economy, doesn't bring down the price of gasoline in the United States. Millions of Americans understand that. And so to talk about Russian oil banning does not solve the economic issues at hand. That's number one. Number two, the second part of the equation is our partner countries. Now, we can produce more oil, but many of our partner countries can't. Why? Because they have oil on the ground. So what do they got to do? They got to get oil from another country. And that oil from another country should be part of the strategic alliance of NATO and UN countries right now. That economic alliance has not happened yet. And the question is, why not? Here's what's at issue. The White House is very good at getting economic alliances. In the last 12 months, this channel featured during the early year, months of 2021, when Janet Yellen reached out to the G20 countries she got a global minimum corporate tax rate agreed upon within just about two weeks. So when countries want to work together as teams, they can work it together as teams. What's at issue? Countries like Italy are dependent upon Russia for oil. So if Russian oil out of the equation, where's Italy gets oil from? Not particularly clear at the moment. There are opportunities, but those opportunities have not resulted in diplomacy cooperation. Let's look at the situation across the board. First, when you look at other countries like United Arab Emirates, they could replace Russian oil. But during an OPEC meeting last week, United Arab Emirates and the OPEC Plus countries said they would not ramp up production. They would keep it at current production levels, and that doesn't solve the situation at all. Why is the White House not taking a more stronger initiative, or at least the allied countries, to ensure that those other countries like OPEC countries increase the production across the board? Increasing that production would alleviate the economic strain on our partner countries and allow the opportunity to get that dependency upon Russian oil eliminated by our partner countries. Remember, we're not dependent upon Russian oil. Our partner countries are. And until we solve our partner countries' problems, we have a problem. Why? It's very, very simple. 
when you talk about economic stability at home, you have to do economic stability here as much as overseas. Let me give you a case in point. You may be a farmer in the backyard growing lots of crops, but the crop disruption is happening overseas. Your price of crops are going to go up here domestically as well. That's how numbers modify themselves based upon world events. So the important thing to deal with is dealing with it completely, not partially. The world economies need to pivot and help countries that are partner allies get dependency off of Russian oil. We're not dependent on Russian oil. So to ban 5% in the United States, great, but we're not dependent upon Russian oil. The bigger problem is those OPEC plus countries, like United Arab Emirates, that is refusing to increase production, release supply chain uh, production, and help our partner countries get those sums of oil. Now, the bigger problem that I see right tonight, however, is that oil is not the major economic factor that could throw the economy into recession. What is it? Yes, wheat and grain. When assessing risk, you have to assess what are the factors at issue. And if you don't assess risk, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. The question tonight is why the White House hasn't assessed this risk and why Wall Street is late to the game as well in assessing where the risk is a factor. Let's look at the situations tonight across the land. Wheat is a major exporter of Ukraine, and Vladimir Putin knew that he was going to evade Ukraine as early as last year. The White House understood that risk as well as early as October of 2021. Did the White House dispatch Treasury individuals to start analyzing the impact on our grain industry in the United States if Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine in October of last year? No. In fact, a new report indicates that when asked about the situation right now, Treasury is not even analyzing the situation. Let's go over the analysis and how important and scary the situation is. Economic disruption means you could potentially go into recession. What's at issue? Everyone understands oil. Everyone understands oil crises of the 1970s. Everyone understands that if oil goes out of control, we can go into recession. That's inherently understood. We also understand that the recession could be two to three years. We also understand where the oil prices can go. Very, very simple. But there's more than oil that's at stake with Vladimir Putin. It's also wheat. Why? Ukraine is a major exporter of wheat to neighboring countries, and now that wheat is not available. And if that is disrupted, then world economies are disrupted as well, including ours. If you look at the numbers of wheat featured in the membership newsletter to viewers' this channel Monday through Friday, the wheat prices have surged out of control, the highest level in nearly eight years in just one week. Here's what's very, very scary. Number one, the White House has not assessed this risk. Second, the White House is not prepared to pivot or deal with the risk. A new interview of Reuters asks whether the White House has had anyone at Treasury deal with the risk to the commodities of wheat, soybean, or corn impacted by Vladimir Putin of, of Ukraine this week. The answer is no. Now, let's make clear. They didn't assess the risk in October of last year when there was 100,000 troops at the Ukraine border, and they're still not assessing the risk tonight. If wheat prices get out of control, what's the solution? The purpose of Treasury, the Department of Treasury under Janet Yellen, is to assess risk. Their job as staff employees, in many cases, is to run permutations and run calculations to determine if this event happens, what can we do to solve the problem? For example, if Vladimir Putin invades Ukraine, what can we do to stabilize the wheat prices in the United States? At the time of this recording, there's no indication that Treasury has done that analysis, that Treasury has not prepared to analyze whether wheat disruption of the United States, whether wheat disruption of price stability in the United States caused by Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine can be stabilized through some other alternative. That analysis has not happened. Equally troubling is Wall Street hasn't done that analysis. Wall Street analysts are talking extensively about oil issues. $120 a barrel, not sustainable. Brent crude, $125, not as sustainable. But now Wall Street analysts are saying, wait a second, we haven't assessed the situation for wheat either. If we haven't assessed the risk for wheat, what do we know about the likelihood of recession for that as well? Let's go over the analysis for wheat right now and why this is actually far more scary than oil. In the case of wheat, there's three things happening that are very problematic tonight. 
One, the White House has no plans in place to fix the situation. Number two, Wall Street has assessed the risk and nor has the White House, meaning that the risks embedded in the markets and banks and treasuries and bonds and your commodities, everything else, has not assessed this as a potential risk for a recession. If the risk hits, it's something that's no one ready for and it would be much more cataclysmic. Number three, Vladimir Putin's acts of aggression in those Black Sea towns that produce wheat would not just cause wheat disruption for one month, but for years to come. Let's look at the situation. The oil being delivered right now on cargo ships across the globe was bought back before Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. So the real interruption of supply chain or the real price escalation of oil will not really kick in significantly until later this month. If you think gasoline prices are high now, wait to see them later this month. In the case of oil, it's a very simple equation. You buy it, you ship it, it arrives. That's easy. The arrival point is later this month. That's where you see the hit because suddenly it won't be on the ship because of the sanctions against Russia. In the case of wheat, it's a little bit more complicated. Vladimir Putin's troops are now in the port city of Odessa, a major agrarian area. That soil will not be harvested this season. It will not be prepared for next season, and it may not be prepared for several seasons to come. Suddenly, all the neighboring countries that are dependent upon that wheat won't have wheat. Shortage, prices go up. United States, prices go up. Bread of the market, prices go up. This is not move and get oil from another place in four, two months or move and get oil from another refinery in two weeks. This is a major economic disruption that could go on for years. And what do you need to know tonight that's trailing, t- telling across the board? A new report from the Prime Minister of England suggests that the Ukrainian-Russian war may not be a few days, a few weeks, but potentially a few years. Tonight, Anthony Blinken, your Treasury Secretary, has gone to Latvia. Why to Latvia? To shore up NATO alliances as a concern that Vladimir Putin's next act of aggression could be against the Baltic states of Lithuania, Latvia, or Estonia. These are NATO alliance countries, and this would trigger an act of defense by the NATO countries, including the United States, to defend one another. Estonia, Latvia, and and, uh, Lithuania are among the potential targets of Vladimir Putin. That's why Blinken is on point tonight in Latvia to ensure that NATO alliances are intact and ensure that Vladimir Putin's acts of aggressions do not uh, go unnoticed. But back in the United States, there's a bigger issue. And that is how to deal with Vladimir Putin's acts of economic aggression against us. He's disrupting our supply chains. And if it's not our direct supply chains, then it's people we do business with, like Italy and France. Tonight, this town of Odessa, featured on this channel for over a a week, the crown jewel of the Black Sea. You're looking at the beautiful opera house in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin's focal point is to take the town of Odessa and stop all imports into its the major, the largest port of the country. But doing that would involve a lot more than just that. At issue is to cause far more damage than that. What is the latest details you need to know about what Vladimir Putin is and isn't doing? And also, what is next on the horizon? First, Boris Johnson out of England today says in a new article release called Putin's Acts of Aggressions Must Fail, that put, that the Western allies may need to do a lot more than they're currently doing. First, we need to mobilize an international humanitarian coalition. We need to do more to help Ukraine defend itself. And we need to maximize economic pressure on Vladimir Putin. Saying things like we're going to remove 5% of oil supply in the United States from Vladimir Putin is not as significant a burden against Vladimir Putin. Tonight, the United States has indicated that it'll dispatch more fighter jets to Poland. More about that in a second. But the latest comments by Boris Johnson is that we need to strengthen your economic security across the boards. 
Ukrainians have barely have been bravely defending their country. It's the vow that's united the Ukrainian community, and we need to do more, says Johnson. Also at issue is that Johnson's a colleague, who is his uh, his secretary, says in a new interview with Sky News that our concern is that this could be going on for years, not days. Prime Minister Dominic Raba, who is uh, UK's Deputy Prime Minister, said Sunday that the war in Ukraine could last months, if not years. Vladimir Putin's acts of aggressions are not going unchecked at the moment. And the question is, how long can it go on? What is new about Putin tonight that you need to know, and what could happen this week as well? The latest details tonight are the following across the land. First, Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania will remain among the, ta- the countries that many are concerned Vladimir Putin is putting his next attention focus on. Number two, the United States is giving more assistance to Ukraine, and it's doing that assistance with new jets. President Zelensky confirms that the United States is dedicating more assistance to the Ukrainian people and also more sanctions against Putin. Those elements involve new fighter jets, and those new fighter jets will be given to Poland, who in turn will give its older fighter jets over to Ukraine. In the case of Odessa, tonight uh, President Zelensky is talking about Odessa fondly, saying Russians have always come on holiday to Odessa, always felt warmth in Odessa, but tonight artillery against Odessa, military missiles against Odessa. If it will be a war crime, it will be a historic crime. The arrival of planes in Poland is still an unsettled issue. What day? But the number of refugees, very clear across the board. Every night on Evenings L8 at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, I give you an update on the refugee situation. It's been growing by about 500,000 a day. 500,000 on Friday, million on Saturday, 1.5 million tonight on Sunday night. The number of refugees will likely grow to the largest since World War II, says a new UN report tonight. Meantime, Vladimir Putin, in perhaps one of his most despicable comments tonight, says that Ukraine does not exist. That, in many opinions, is a word of genocide. Horrible comments tonight from Vladimir Putin. What you need to know is that the Ukrainian situation for those safe harbor corridors is very fluid, and this may be where the situation changes dramatically in the next 48 hours. Let me tell you the latest details on that tonight in this special one-hour broadcast from Santa Monica, California. The situation tonight involves both economic, military allegiances and dedication of resources, but there's a big humanitarian issue at hand that simply cannot go unchecked by NATO alliance countries. Let me tell you what's going on. Women and children were told of an agreed upon negotiated deal by Ukrainian officials and Russian officials late last week covered on this channel to provide safe harbor quarters to flee Ukraine. What is a safe harbor corridor? Imagine in your town you have a local highway or local major road. The road is cleared and your city council, your mayor says, five hours tomorrow, get your belongings, pack up women and children, grandmothers. You can walk on the road, go to the next country or next town. You can get out free. There'll be nothing there. That's the visual. It's a negotiated deal between Ukraine and Russian officials. It was done earlier this week. It was the big gleaming hope of this entire week of very disparaging, very horrible news. So the women and children got into those corridors in two cities, and then suddenly they saw something they did not expect to see. Cluster bombing. Military officials from the Russian army blocking them. So they immediately went back into their homes. Immediately, the negotiations continued. A Korean official said, why were Russians blocking the safe harbor corridor? These are negotiated deals to ensure that women and children, unarmed, could flee to neighboring Poland and take refugee status. Russian officials failed to make their agreement solid. So they said, once again, we will honor the agreement, Russian officials. Again, a second attempt. 
At the time of this broadcast on a Sunday, March 6, 2022, recorded suddenly after 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, it looks as though three times the Russian officials have agreed to it and three times they violated it. There has been no upholding of the agreement by Russian officials. And in some cases on broadcast media, you can see that individuals have perished in the safe corridor. What is a safe corridor and what is happening tonight? The situation tonight is that as NATO countries try to beef up their situation to ensure that they are ready for any military action against them, they're also sitting back and watching as millions and hundreds of thousands of refugees from Ukraine try to get safe harbor and can't get it. Is this appropriate? NATO countries whose purpose is to protect one another are not giving any assistance in the situation. Let's analyze it tonight. Ukraine is not a NATO country. And Vladimir Putin doesn't want NATO, Ukraine to be a NATO country. At issue, the Ukrainian people are trying to flee to Poland through a quarter negotiated during agreements between Ukraine and Russia. Once in that quarter, Russia doesn't allow them to leave. And in some cases, people have perished. So what are the NATO alliance countries doing if Russia doesn't allow the safe harbor of women and children unarmed to flee war toward Ukraine for Poland? Are NATO-based countries just to do nothing and look on? Are NATO countries just to watch and say it's between Ukraine and Russia? Are we supposed to see millions of women and children not take safe harbor in Poland because it's not, because NATO does not recognize Ukraine yet as a member state? The city of Mariupol said that Russia is violating the ceasefire agreement. Unfortunately, we already have the regular army of the Russian Federation shelling along the corridor. In some cases, there are reports of shelling in the corridor. This does not give a sense of security. Negotiations are underway, and as soon as we receive a security guarantee, we'll announce it. Well, in the case of the city of Mirapol, it's announced it twice, and twice Vladimir Putin has not upheld that agreement. Today, the president of France spoke to Vladimir Putin, and this was among the discussions. President Macron said to Putin, you need to honor the safe quarter and allow these individuals to flee. And again, the honor was not established. Putin did not allow the safe harbor. I believe in the next 48 hours, this will be the major issue internationally, because as countries are trying to deal with economic uncertainty, as they're trying to deal with the stability internationally, as they're trying to deal with the potential advances of Vladimir Putin across neighboring countries, and as they're trying to beef up the military defense of Ukraine, there's a very simple other part of the equation that has left me unsaid. Women and children need to be able to take safe harbor. They need to be able to evacuate safely. They need to be able to go to neighboring Poland. And if they can't get to neighboring Poland, what are they supposed to do? Stay in their homes? and see the desecration of Gershon featured on this channel in the last few days, NATO-based countries need to find a solution quicker. And the White House needs to find a solution for you economically as well. Tonight, the continuation continues throughout the evening. I encourage you to send your comments and questions and thoughts and prayers to the people of Ukraine. Have more questions or comments about tonight's video? Send me a question on social media. Nightly on this channel, 7 p.m. Pacific, 7 p. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we analyze your money. It's one hour special broadcast of Eatings LA, America's most watched show in prime time. I encourage you to keep your prayers and thoughts of the people of Ukraine because the situation is unfolding by the minute, by the hour, and by the second. A lot of stories to be told and a lot of developing details that impact your wallet at home. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful evening, always stay on point, always stay motivated, and always keep the people of Ukraine in your prayers. Have a beautiful evening, and stay here as Evenings LA continues throughout the night. <laughs>